I think of God, somebody say the power of agreement. Say the power of the greatest. The power of the Amen. Let us bow and let us pray, people of God. Father Lord, we just come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God, we want to thank you, Lord God, for all you have done for your people, for all you have done for us uh, individual, Lord God. Father, we go ahead and sing up a praise for what you shall do corporately. Oh God, we ask that your Holy Spirit come and teach us all things, Lord God. Father, we ask that he minister to our hearts and our souls, Lord God. Father, I remove my, myself and my plans and my ways, Lord God. And Father, I connect and I touch and agree with your Spirit that he shall have his way, Lord God. And that he shall do the teaching, Lord God. Father, I thank you that as your teaching goes forth, as your word goes forth, that Father, Lord God, that it will crush the lives of the enemy. That Father, Lord God, that in the uproot anything that is not pleasant, Lord God, to who you have called us to be, Lord God. We thank you for deliverance, restoration, and we thank you, Lord God, just for, Lord God, uh, waking like never before, Lord God. Father, we love you, we thank you, and it is in you, and God, please forgive us for anything we have done, said, or entertained, Lord God. Let not the enemy have right to the service. We decree and declare, Lord God, that you will have your way today, Lord God. And Father, we thank you for your word liberating us in hours, Lord God, that we didn't even realize that it's there for us. So Father, we love you, we thank you, and it's in you, Jesus, that we pray and say amen. Amen. The power of agreement. So look at this, people, God. Hallelujah. We got the power of agreement, and we have, amen, uh, we have to understand uh, what it means to agree, because uh, a lot of times we are in agreement, but we are in agreement with things, amen? We are in the agreement with wrong things, praise God. You know, a moment. The power of agreement. Okay. Um, the power of agreement, people, God, there is there is so much power to agreeing, amen? Um, there's power to agreeing in negative things, and there's power agreeing in positive things, but there is power in agreeance, amen? Um, sometimes we can agree to something, amen? <coughs> and it begins to have influences in our life, Lord God. We can, uh, we can agree to some negative things. Have you ever been a person that you, you've been there before and you agree, uh, agree to some negative things and, and before you know it, you was in a negative place. Hallelujah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, have you ever been in a place where you agreed to, to some positive things? Amen. And you received some positive uh, results. Amen. There is power in, in agreements. Amen. And we're going to come today from Matthew um, 18, amen, and we're going to read down to, um, we're going to read 15 down to 19, but I want to start with 19 first, amen, if we can, amen. I want everybody to go down to 19, verse 18, and go to 19, people of God, amen. Once you have that word, amen, you can declare amen, amen, um, once you have it, people of God. Hallelujah. I'll give you about a couple of more seconds to get to it, amen. Hallelujah. And the word of God reads us this, Matthew 18, verse 19. It says, Again, I say unto you, that if two, if two of you shall agree on the earth as touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them, and my Father which is in heaven, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. I'm going to say that again. It says that if two, look at those people, God. It says that if two of you, look at the word shall, that means that you got to volunteer and do that, amen? That if two of you shall agree, look at the place on earth, amen? It says that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, not some things, but anything, that they shall, look at who shall, they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Look at this, people. But I just want to speak just briefly from this text right here, and we will read the other scriptures. Amen. The power of agreement. Look at that. It says that 
if two of you, the Lord began to allow me to do a, uh, a, a little brief uh, a studying on the number two, amen? And in the Hebrew tongue, the meaning of number two, amen, we've always looked at the biblical meaning of number two as, as being a witness, which it does mean being a witness, amen? It does mean unity, amen? The Lord, when he made uh, man and woman, amen, hallelujah, that was two, that was a union, hallelujah? When uh, uh, the Lord talks about, amen, church and Jesus Christ, amen, hallelujah, that's a union, amen, that's two, hallelujah. But the word um, two means more than that in the biblical uh, aspect and in the Hebrew tongue, amen, hallelujah. Two also means to divide. And you say, wait a minute, what do you mean? Two means also divide. The Lord says that in the book of Genesis that he divided the night from what? Say it again. He divided the night from day. That was two different things. Amen? So a lot of times we've been thinking that two just means as a witness. And we've been thinking that two just means, amen, a union. But it also can mean division. Amen? I want somebody to catch this in the spirit. Because sometimes God got to divide some stuff in order for the house to be unified. Or somebody should have got happy right there. Amen. Sometimes God got to make a separation. Amen. For the unification to come in. Amen. Hallelujah. Because, amen, if a house, amen, is divided, amen, if the spirit of separatism is there, it will not grow. Amen. So sometimes God has to move some stuff out of the way so we can grow. Amen. Some of us are divided in the ministry. Some of us are divided, amen, in our relationships. Some of us are divided. Is two. 
and I can show a manifestation that you ain't never seen in your life. But I need two that are, that are coming to union. Because remember, two means a union also. To agree. Amen. And sometimes we think we got people that's agreeing with us. And they're not. Oh, is this all right? Sometimes we think that we have a person, amen, and, 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 and we think that they are agreeing with us because we're friends. We think that they are agreeing with us because we are relatives. We think that they are agreeing with us because we're brothers and sisters in Christ, but that's not necessarily the case, amen. The Lord says, I need two to make a union on the behalf of me, amen. I need two that will touch and agree on some things that I want, amen. Some of us, amen, the union can't be formed because what you want on the earth ain't got nothing to do with God. Oh, it's all right. Sometimes the unification cannot take place because what we're asking for in the earth does not have anything to do with God. And this is scripture and this is written in words so Jesus Christ is saying it, amen. And he says this. He says that if two of you shall agree on the earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be given. It says that not one person have to want it, but they have to want it. Oh, somebody woke up. I, I thank you. I got a, I got a, oh, thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm looking for something. Thank you for the oh. It doesn't say, amen, hallelujah, that one person have to want it. They both have to want it. Oh, praise God. And some of us will say, well, I'm going to come and I'm going to touch and agree with Pastor. But do you really want what Pastor wants? Oh, God bless you. Some of us say, well, I got to go in here and I got to touch and agree with my household. But do your household really want what you want? Some of us are touching and agreeing with people on the job. But really do that employer or that employee want what you want. Amen. It says that they got to both want it. And a lot of times we're touching and agreeing with folks that really don't want, want what you want. They just try to be politically correct and not hurt your feelings. Amen. And while you praying and sweating and laying out fasting, amen, they're sitting, amen, with folks that's conflicting with what you're trying to do for the kingdom. Oh, God, I bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this is just not going on in the church, amen. It's going on in our households. It's going on. Yourself. Amen. One minute you're ready to praise God, and the next minute, amen, something goes shifty. There's a division taking place on the inside of you. And you're going to have to get the power of ingredients to come and touch and agree. Amen. But you got to both want it. You say, well, if the vision is going on inside of me, how we both don't want it? Because you got a spirit, a soul, amen, and a body. Look at the three components. Hallelujah. You got to get a model on that, cool. Praise God. That's for that analytical thinker. Praise God. Hallelujah. So here, here it is, people of God. He said, uh, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, here we go, that they shall ask. Somebody say they. I uh, say it like you mean it. They. <laughs> they shall ask. It shall be what? It shall be done for who? Them. Look at this. Not only is it going to be done for one person, but it says it's going to be for them. It's going to be done for them. So see, when I come in agreement with pastor for my household, that means my household will get. Or somebody should count that in the spirit. But I come in agreement with, with my sister in Christ, amen, for a financial breakthrough, amen. That means I'm going to get a fight. The Lord said that he would do it for them. And what we don't realize is that you're so jealous and thinking about yourself all the time, amen. You don't realize that whatever God bless them, then you don't get blessed too. But if you can come up out of yourself, just for a moment, praise God. Just for a moment, amen. Hallelujah. And, 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 and you know, I, I never understood selfish prayers. How you gonna be selfish in your prayer? You selfish. 
Now he ain't helping up, pray. You ain't helping up. <laughs> Praise God. We got to help him. But I'm praying for him. For, uh, God, Jesus, we bless. Hallelujah. Some people, y'all, you shouldn't want to touch and agree with them. I almost say it like that. Amen. Some folks, you shouldn't even be <laughs> Some folks, you shouldn't even be calling up, asking them to touch me. You, you shouldn't want them touching your sandwich, touching nothing. Amen. You shouldn't be asking them to touch and agree with you on anything. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is the strength of the Holy Ghost going there. Amen. Some of you are calling up people and touching and agree with folks that you know that don't rip you up, <laughs> cut you up, and, and slandalize you, and, 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 and be rid of your character. And you call them up and talk about, can you, can you pray with me? But what? 
what we do is we jump over that. Oh, we're going to talk about it, amen? Because I'm reading straight to the word. Because I was examining myself, amen? I said, God, give me. Hallelujah. And he showed me a lot of places. Yeah, no, <laughs> deliverance. Praise God. And hallelujah. And I looked at the word. He said, this is the problem, brother. He said, you are doing everything out of order. He said, whenever a person offends me, oh, y'all said I wasn't going to stand here, so I know I'm not. It's going to be hard for me to stay up here. Look at that. He says, whenever a person offends me, this is what the Lord says, that you deal with that person. But what we do, guess what we do? I follow Sister Alicia. You know what? I don't know. Should I do this? Should I go tell him about myself? Or should I go tell him about myself? You have skipped the first poem. Oh, this is going to be some truth today. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't skip the first part. What did the scripture tell us to do? It says, go to that person alone. Don't even, don't even bring another party into it. You deal with that person first. I love this. The scripture said, alone. The and who? Them. You see, the and whoever you had the problem with, you deal with them first by themselves. And, and I'm going to read on, hallelujah. But a lot of times, we avoid dealing with the person. We want, we want, amen, to bring other parties into it because there's a lot of reasons, people, God. Watch this. There's a lot of reasons that we don't like to deal with people by ourselves. Can I talk to you transparently? There's a lot of things, especially when there's a conflict, because we're being very transparent. When there's a conflict, amen, we don't want to sit down with the person by ourselves. Sometimes we want to bring other parties into it. Can, can I get some participation? Do, do, can anybody tell me why we do that? Because I've been guilty of, a, of, a, of many of occasions to have somebody on your side. <laughs> and I've done it. Y'all know how many times I've done it. Yeah, I know I'm right. Yeah, well, if you knew you were right, why you why you bring somebody else into it? <laughs> to have somebody on your side. Anybody else? Yes. It, some some of us are just drama. Drama. drama, drama say it's from a, a mouth of a baby. We just full of drama. Any other reason? Anybody? Yes. That's the one I was looking for, Sister Dress. Fear. We are afraid of facing our own problems. We are afraid of dealing with our own conflict because we're fearful. And there are a lot of reasons we can be fearful. So sometimes we try to gather up the support that we think that we need, but the only support that we need is the support of God. And the support of God is always giving us instructions on how to rectify. He said, you go. You go to the person that has trespassed over you. And you deal with them alone. Now watch this. Because there are times that people don't listen. Amen. I've been guilty just recently. Well, don't listen. But you still have to give it time. Hear me, people of God. Hallelujah. If you go to somebody and say, yes, I, I don't like the way they treated me, and I feel like they crossed the Bible, so I'm going to deal with them, and this is what I'm going to do. You know, I don't like what you did, and you such and such, such and such, and you such, 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 such. Well, such, 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 I don't want to hear it. Well, you're not dealing with the person. Are you dealing with the person? No. You didn't deal with the person. There was no time. There was no, you're not dealing with the person. Now, if the person's trying to deal with you, and you cut them off every second, oh, y'all know what I'm doing. Praise God. Look at the woman. And then you cut them off every second. Then you understand? You're not allowing the process to take its proper place. You understand? So what happens, the Lord says that if you can, if you can follow this first step, he said, you're going to gain the problem. This is what the Lord says. That means that you will gain 
Amen. A brother. Not a friend. Somebody that'll catch this in the spirit. You gotta bring, see, a brother is closer than a friend. Amen. You gotta you gotta gain a brother. Amen. Hallelujah. If you can follow these instructions. But you can't touch and agree with anybody if you have not dealt with the trans if you have not dealt with your tra your your trespassers, you can't touch and agree with anybody. Because you're still offended about different things that have happened. And you 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 cannot do it. The Lord says that if you have a problem, you go to people. I mean you go to the individual alone. But what we do is we bring so many people into our conflict. Oh, I'm going we're gonna talk about it. We bring numerous of people into our conflict, and they become a part of our conflict, and that's not spiritually or scripturally right. That we bring folks before we deal with the individual, we bring them into our conflict. Hallelujah. Some stuff don't want to go no farther than you and the person. Tell me why we let it go farther. And I've seen this. I've seen the situation rectified. And the person still has comfort. So that means that, hallelujah, that you really didn't deal with it, amen? You really didn't deal with it. Watch this. And the person don't listen. Look at those people, now. We're almost finished. Thou hast gained thy brother, but if he will not hear thee, look at this, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three what? Witnesses Every word that may be established. Look at this. Every what? Word. word. That, that's what it says, right? That may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the who? Church. Okay, watch this. So you go get your witnesses, right? You go get your witnesses, which is fine. Hallelujah. You go get your witnesses. And, 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 and you get your witnesses, and when you get your witnesses, amen, this is what it says. If he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witness every word. And we've talked about this before. You're not getting a witness that agree to your flesh, that agree to everything that you do, amen, just because they want to be in good favor with you. You get the witness that know how to tell the truth. You get the witness that know the word of God, amen, to make sure, amen, that that person don't play favoritism because of this occupation or that occupation. You get the witness, amen, that will exercise and uphold truth. Hallelujah. And once that witness is, is established, it says that if the person still neglects you, you bring them to the church. You bring them to the church. How often have we seen conflicts come to the church? Say it again. Oh. But guess what? But sadly, all that conflict going on in the house of the Lord. Look at it. I ain't finna be, I ain't finna be with them. I ain't finna be with them. I ain't finna all that conflict. If you have a problem and you don't got your witness together and it still ain't rectified, why they came to the church yet? Because you don't want it to be rectified. Praise God. You like, as, as Sister Tan said, you like your drama. You like that. I really, you really don't want it resolved. Amen. And the reason why we should want it resolved, why? Because it conflicts with the house of God. So you should want it resolved. And you should bring your conflict. Hear me. If the person don't know that you got a problem with them, then you should not be discussing them. Amen. So, so I, I got, I'm glad I got, a, I got one amen. Praise God. Let me say that again. If the person don't know that you have a problem with them, then you should not be discussing them. Amen? Because you're not brave enough. You don't have enough courage. Amen? I'm just afraid of what I'm doing. You're a liar. You're not afraid of what you're going to do. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? That no, no. You're deceiving yourself. Hallelujah. You might be afraid of conflict. But you ain't afraid of what you don't do. God don't keep you this long. He'll keep you through conflict. We don't want to hear that. We don't want, we don't want to hear that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hear me. I think I got the biggest anger issue in here. I could 
can imagine me choking out some folks. <laughs> Amen? But that imagination has not manifested itself. Even in my worst conflicts. Because I know who keeps me. And for me to say that I can't be kept, amen, is for me to say that my God is weak. And he's not weak. He can keep me. Praise God. He can keep him too, amen. <laughs> so if the person don't know you have a problem with them, amen, hallelujah, stop discussing it. Come on, brave heart. Stop it. And can I say this up here? I'm going to be so very transparent. Sometimes we op operate in a coward way. I say it. Amen. If we sitting and rip people up behind their backs, and you don't say a mumbling thing to their face. 